across. This is the only trade of any kind where you need it to be on paper. I mean, we can trade anything, uh, buy and sell anything you don't, but for contract, you need to put it on paper, make sure the I's are dotted, T's are crossed. Um, but I don't know if you think the same way. I'm the first person to say, if you can, please, a couple weeks, not more than a couple of weeks, put a sign on your front lawn before you sell your house. Try it. You might get a drive-by, be very careful, get a good lawyer, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I take no offense to that. It's not, you know, realtors aren't the only way to sell, but it's been proven that it's one of the most successful. It's your largest financial asset. So do yeah. you want to give it to somebody who's not really schooled and trained? I mean, because you're, it's like akin to going to a surgeon who just got out of school. You know, you want to make sure your fi largest financial asset. Give it yeah. to somebody who knows what they're doing to protect your asset. Sure. No, great, great, uh, great point. Uh, Sarah's on the phone line from Mississauga. Hello, Sarah. Thanks for calling. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks, you. Thanks a lot. And it's a pleasure to speak to Mr. McDaddy. Um, just a quick question about the... Um, uh, the new rebate from the government, we're actually trying to invest in the new uh, places, and we need to know about the rebate um, from, um, um, I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you, yeah. Yeah, so it's about the new rebate for investing in a new property, like the new construction. We were told that if you were to sell it or rent it right away, uh, you have to pay the builders money that couldn't go up to 24000 So can you actually just give us some details about that? So you're talking about uh, purchasing a pre-construction uh, residential home yeah, for inv yeah. for investment purposes? For investment purposes, and then, rent or, or sell. And to rent or to sell, and there's some sort of a rebate. So, yeah. so what happens, um, Sarah, is when you're buying, let's say, an investment condo, the thinking is that you're... You know, you're going to move in and you get the HST savings, right? So that's really what they're talking about, that piece there. So if you then decide to rent it, it's no longer going to be a principal residence. The builder loses a percentage of those um, HST uh, dollars. And then in turn, you're going to have to pay that. So that's where I think there's a catch-22. If it's your own principal residence, there's no issues whatsoever because the HST with builders, they included the purchase price. But there's a bit of a caveat. If you're not moving in, they lose a bit of those credits. And in, in turn, they'll, they'll basically subtract that from what you're supposed to be getting. So I, right or wrong, I'm sure there's a lot of people that move in for a month. Right, right. And, uh, and not that you're teaching or advocating, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that move in for a month, claim it as a principal residence. And then when it's fully registered and the dust is cleared, yeah. they rent it out, um, yeah, I'm mean, guessing. I, yeah, that's right. I mean, there's, I guess there's different ways around that in theory. Um, so, uh, but that's, I believe, what the builder is basically addressing. Okay. Yeah. A anything else off of that, Sarah? No? So she's all... Okay, she's packing her clothes. She's moving in. She, okay, she's moving she's in. At home. Yeah, she's, she's moving. moving. It's become her but principal residence. But she might residence. stay. It's not she a, might stay. That's it's right. not, it's not She might enjoy table. the amenities. She, and <laughs> <laughs> she, may, uh, she may stay there. Um, so.